Season 3 is here, and it's been my busiest summer yet. Before we go into those who have now joined us, let's take a moment to remember those who have moved on. Oh, God. Already hope I haven't screwed this up. Dimitri Folkier, brought in by accident in Season 1, he has moved to West Brom for £4.1 million. Pounds. Gabriel Martinelli, one the kid in real life, not so much on the game. Zenit brought in for £12.25 million. Pounds. Bernd Leno, gone to Shakhtar. Our number one keeper for the first season, £24.5 million, rising to £30.5 with bonuses. He will be missed. My first ever signing as Arsenal manager, Thomas Delaney, has gone for £30 million pounds to Napoli. Pierre Emmerich. Aubameyang. Prolific Arsenal goal scorer, Juve have snapped him up for 45 million pounds. Yeah, I know, I'm worried too. So five players gone, £160 million, plus the £76 million that I was given by the board. Let's see what I bought with it. I'm actually a little bit excited, to tell you the truth. We'll start with the basics. Em I'm not calling him basic. Emil Aldero uh, bought him in from Sampdoria. He is going to be our backup keeper, maybe even a first teammate. He looks very good on paper. His passing can do with a bit of work. But with Bernd Leno going and Lovakovic taking over the gloves... At the end of the last season, I trust him to be able to the man to carry us forward. And Emil Odaro, at 24 years old, didn't strike me as too bad a signing. Most importantly, he's got a winning personality, he's resolute, and he's got 15 leadership and 15 determination. Bought him in for only £9 million. I think for a 24-year-old Italian keeper who's got a lot of potential, that is a pretty decent signing. And he'll be able to step in when required. Next up, I've gone very English uh, in this transfer window, just as a bit of a spoiler. Nathan Wood, uh, won the kid down at Middlesbrough, I believe. Bought him in for only £18 million. Pounds. Looks very good. English, young centre-back, valued now at 10.75, so I paid a little bit over his valuation. But he looks like a very decent player, especially when you look at the physicals. The acceleration and pace are very good. Strength of 13 is good. He's relatively tall. Marking of 15 is good. Heading could do a bit of work at 12, but on the ground, he's absolutely excellent. I can see him and Milenkovic. Those two together could be excellent. And now we get into the big boys. Uh, Lewis Cook. £44 million I paid for Lewis Cook from Bournemouth. But he can play absolutely everywhere in that midfield. He can play as a defensive midfielder, as a centre midfielder, even as an attacking midfielder. Probably a little less so that, but you look at it. Physically, very solid. Mentally, very good indeed. Leadership of 15, again, determination of 15. Very good. Passing of 15, tackling 14. A bit of an all-round midfield juggernaut. Very, very happy to have him in the side. I've really focused on getting a lot of determined and leaders in this year. So, basically, I tried to get everyone that had around about... I don't know, 14 to 15 leadership and up. Very, very happy indeed with Lewis Cook. Still only 24. Feels like he's been around for years, but still only 24 and listed as an elite midfielder. So, yeah. I told you I went English. Hello, Declan Rice. £58 million pounds I spent for Declan Rice, which actually in today's market isn't too bad. Obviously, he can double up as a centre-back and as a defensive midfielder. He is very tall. He is very good mentally. Again, leadership and determination, both very high. This guy is probably one of the more technically well-gifted defensive players that we have. Him and Torreira are definitely going to be fighting out for that defensive midfielder position, but I really like the idea of Declan Rice. I've made us a lot more powerful. I've gotten some bigger physical players uh, with a little bit more up here, as well as just the technical ability. We've got two more really big signings here. I'll save the striker for last, because obviously I'm sure you're all sort of thinking, who have you got into a place of Bamiang? And don't say Haaland. But before that, I saw this guy, he came up on the scout report, at 92 rating, and I just had to get him. Pedrinho. Now, I believe that... Is it Corinthians out there? It's COR, and I have no idea what the actual name of that team is. So, if anyone can let me know what their actual name is, that would be brilliant. But it's not about them. Look at this lad. Four and a half stars. He plays at the same position as Pepe, but he can also play everywhere across the front, at, apart from at striker. Absolutely 
insane attributes here. 16 acceleration, 18 agility. He's very make weight, which means that he might not suit the Premier League style. But I got him for £16 million. £16 million. It's nothing. 16 flair, 16 off the ball, 16 vision, 17 dribbling, flair of 16, long shots 14. I might have already said flair. Passing 15, technique 18. He is technically incredible. Absolutely incredible. And he is going to be amazing. I just know that he is going to be absolutely amazing. On the wings now, I think we are probably the most stacked team in the Premier League. We've got Pedrinho, Pepe, Depay, uh, for the moment, Reese Nelson, but we'll get on to that in a minute. Smith Rowe, we've got so many fantastic wingers. Sane, obviously, we're just absolutely packed. So excited. Could not say how excited I am. But he's not the signing I'm most excited about. And that man is Fabio Silva. £63 million, pounds. 19 years old, Portuguese, the next Ronaldo. He looks nuts. For a 19-year-old, his record speaks for itself. 19 goals in 33 appearances for Porto. He has pedigree. He can play nearly anywhere along the front. His physicals are very well-rounded. He's only going to get better as well. He's a tall player, 186 centimetres, so he's not sure. He's a bit more of a physical presence up front compared to what we've had before. Finishing is 15, dribbling 17, first touch 16, passing 13, technique 16. Absolutely nuts. His potential could be up to five stars. He is absolutely unbelievable. And hopefully he'll be playing today against Liverpool. And yes, I know it feels a lot like deja vu. I completely forgot we had the community shield. We've still got a week of the transfer window left, okay? And we'll go into a proper, like, um, season preview once the transfer window is done. Because one more bit of transfer news before we get into the game. I'm a little bit all over the place, and you can tell, because it's been a very difficult summer. Reese Nelson's become a real pain in the ass, okay? Lots of bids came in for him over the summer. I got a bit annoyed by it. He then got annoyed at me, because I rejected a bid from City for him. And uh turns out that Brighton came in for £40 million pounds from City, had come for £48 million pounds for him. He's angry at me, so now he wants to move. So we could get £48 million pounds for Reese Nelson, okay? That's part one. I look at my team report, and I've been told that we're still lacking a lot of leadership and a lack of bravery in the team, all right, and a little bit of aggression. So, to fix that, I've gone in for a few players, and I've shortlisted a few players and put a few, bleh, 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 and put a few bids in. Number one of those is Christopher Adger. I look at him, and he always looks, attribute-wise, absolutely nuts. He's moved to Milan in this from Celtic, okay? He's a very good player. He's brilliantly well-rounded. He can play anywhere in the centre of the park. All right, And that is excellent. He's also got what I need in terms of 18 determination, 17 leadership. Brilliant. But I would have to pay through the nose for him. Uh, I believe... How much would I bid for him? I'd bid £47 million for him. We've still got a little bit left in the budget as well. So it shouldn't be an issue getting him in. The problem is, how often am I really going to play him? I could either go for a really experienced leader... And there are a few on there here who I've, I've had a look at. Hang on, we'll show you some of them. So to give you a little context, while that's been going on, I really wanted to sign Jordan Henderson, but I didn't, okay? I, I, I know that wouldn't go down too well. Um, what I did say is that I could sign Felipe at Atletico Madrid, who's got 16 determination and 17 leadership, and he is dirt cheap at only £9.25 million. Pounds. Or I could go for Leonardo Benucci, who still is at 34 but is absolutely still one of the best rounded players ever. The best thing about them is I probably wouldn't have to play them as regular starters. I would just want them there just to help the team and help with the dynamics and give a little bit more leadership, a bit more experience, and I don't know what to do. Do I go for Christopher Adger, who's a player that I can kind of keep and help build the team around and obviously can be a captain on the pitch, or do I get Leonardo Benucci or Felipe and get them to kind of be the leaders off the pitch? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, because this has been bothering me quite a lot, and I don't know what I'm meant to do. So I really could do with your help in the comment section. Uh, and obviously we have to do it before the transfer window ends, which will be before the next episode. So please do leave a comment on this and let me know your thoughts, and hopefully I will make the right decision between now and then. I'm, I'm thinking Adria. If I have the money, I might as well spend it. But that's just me. Anyway, on with the Community Shield. Do you know one thing I've realised? That my squad list now is absolutely massive. And we've got so many players to pick from. Um, it was actually really hard picking this lineup, But we've gone with this then. So it's going to be our usual card tactics and formation. 
Lovatovich is in goal. Tierney, Ugani, Milankovic, and Bellerin retain all the places. Declan Rice, Lewis Cook, and Joe Willock are now making up the midfield three. So it's an all English midfield three. One of the reasons I really wanted to go in this summer to transfer window, I wanted to get a real English contingent or British contingent. So we've even got Ben Chilwell on the bench, etc., etc., as well. Actually, well, he's off not on the bench, but you know what I mean. Um, then we've got Sane, Haaland, and Pedrinho. Going forward, that could be an incredible front three. But the fact that we've still got Nicolas Pepe on the bench, we've got Depay, we've got Fabio Silva, we've got Donny van der Beek, we've got Maitland Niles, we've got Odero and Wood. And even in the reserves, look at the calibre of players I've got here in the reserves. It's absolutely nuts. Oh my god, they signed Hassan Awar. Oh, what a signing that is. Let's go with expectations. I expect you to come back with a win with the trophy. Oh, that's a. Uh, you know, one of those tumbleweed moments. Like, that's it. Literally in the changing room. It's just. No one can understand what the hell I've just said. Why, why is he expecting to win it? Liverpool just won the treble. Liverpool did actually do the double last year. They beat Real Madrid in the Champions League final. So they did a double. We were the only ones that actually stopped them from winning a treble. Although realistically, they, they did actually win one. Anyway, Bruno Fernandes on the ball. He whips it in for the first highlight of the season. And Virgil van Dijk hits the post. Lovakovic hits the ball long. Good take there by Leroy Sane. Here we go. Pedrinho. First time we've seen him on the ball. And he's already darted right past Grimaldo. Pedrinho. Unlucky, mate. Nearly. He's left-footed, cutting in off the right. So he's basically a carbon copy of Pepe. Milenkovic heads that one forward there. But they've gone over the top. Latoura Martinez is in. Martinez. It's a good save by Lovakovic. Not sure he wasn't offside there. I think maybe... Kieran Tierney was playing him on the side. Basically, this year, I think whoever finishes ahead of Liverpool in this season is going to win the title. I think it's literally as simple as that. They're playing so well. They're so overly powered and so good in this game that they are the team that we really need to beat. We can finish ahead of Liverpool. We're in business. Well, we've got our style and we're going to continue to play that way. Bellerin running down the right now. Cuts back. Plays it into Joe Willock. Willock here. Lovely ball over the top for Haaland. Haaland, oh, he's missed. He smashes it straight at Allison. He's got a chance here now. There are no favourites between him and Fabio Silva. Both of them are going to have their chance to kind of claim that well, starting striker spot as their own. At the moment, I'm going to give it to Haaland because he obviously he's kind of like linked in with the team. He's played with us for a season. He knows the players. But I'll, I'll gradually integrate Silva into it. Haaland's also had a very good pre-season. He's been banging goals in left, right and centre. So I could do with him continuing that form. And that was a good run from him there. Becker on the ball. Oh, I thought he'd given that away to Haaland there. Not quite. Van Dijk into Fabinho. Van Dijk. Bruno Fernandes. Great ball at the top. Martinez just keeps getting away from him. And I can see that Bellerin was playing him on side there. And Lovakovic has made another fantastic save. This is why I was happy to let Leno go. Because Lovakovic is incredibly good. I think he's one of those little bargain finds that you can find this year on FM. So I'd highly recommend that one of you get him. Let me know, do you guys actually play FM or like, do you just actually like watching it? Let me know in the comment section because I'm always keen. Like, I, I, I think it's a game that most people watch it, obviously play it. And my language is nappy here. He's given away a free kick and this usually results in the goal. So I'm a little bit nervous and I should be as Virgil van Dijk makes it 1-0. And I found a Final Fantasy 13 case under my desk. Two seconds. I do play other games other than Football Manager and I'm choosing to ignore the fact that van Dijk's just scored. I think... That this is fine. We let them win the the Community Shield. They let us win the FA Cup. I think that's a fair trade-off. Well, this has a very familiar feel to it here. Oh, hello. There's a highlight just before the end. Becker hits it long into Firmino. Martinez just gives you absolute nightmares. Literally, he's playing on the shoulder all the time. Grimaldo here. Oh, God. He's going to get past Willett, but Bellerin clears it. Come on, boys. Someone win it. No one's even moving to it. Oh, uh, great ball over the top to Mane. Mane, what a goal that is. I mean, how can you stop? You can't stop that. And uh, I think we're being made to pay for the FA Cup win here by Liverpool. What a goal this is here. They're going to be so hard to stop this year. Gomez into Awa. Uh, I mean, this ball is sumptuous. And the finish from Mane here. I don't care who you are. I don't think anyone's going to stop that. That is an incredible goal. Well... That wasn't very good. I'm going to get aggressive and say, show me something else in the second half. That's that's not great, is it? It's time. We're going to bring out my new formation and get excited, everybody. It's a 5-2-3. <laughs> it's, just, it's a very strange formation, but I think that this could actually work quite well for us here. So this is the new formation we're going to be trying out this season. Maybe when I'm playing the bigger teams, this is what I'm going to try and do so we can make the most of our fullbacks. Get them higher up the pitch. 
And uh, it's still going to use a bit of tinkering, but this seems like a good opportunity to do it. Declan Rice hasn't been too bad. I know that he can play as a central defender, so that's where we're going to play him for this second half. It's a very interesting formation. It's very Chelsea under Conte, if you know what I mean, where it was literally just like a couple of banks and then counter-attack. That was sort of like the way that we played, but it's, it's going to be interesting. I'm not sure how well it suits the team, but they might grow into it. We don't know. Um, da, 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 da. Lewis Cook's had a crap game. That's always a good start to your career, isn't it? So he's going to come off. On comes Donny van der Beek. And I'm going to take Pedrinho off and bring on Nicolas Pepe. And we might as well bring Fabio Silva on as well. Get him playing as that advanced forward. I want to see what they're like in real, li uh, in real life. I want to see what they're like in action. So let's go with that. This, I said, now that I know that we're not really going to win this game, we're not in it, we might as well try out this new formation and see how we get on with it. We've got to find a way. Of getting past this Liverpool side. Like, we need to find a way of beating them. Asane steps over a free kick. He whips it towards the back post, but Van Dijk heads it clear. Milenkovic on the ball now. All the way back to Donny van der Beek. Great spread of the play there from Donny to find Sane. Sane now up against Fabinho. Does him. Pepe. Oh, what a save by Beck. I mean, that doesn't help when Allison's making absolute worldies, to be fair. And then Fabio Silva on the ball. Lovely turn of pace there. Go on, mate. Find the pass. Great ball. Pepe. Please score. Pepe. We couldn't even make it close. We couldn't even make it close. And as usual, when I do my little elbow of disappointment, I move the camera. Oh, it's still not over yet. It's been good for me to test out the formation. We've probably been a lot more solid. And there they are, picking up the community shield. Fair play to the ball there. They just completely battered us. I'm not too worried. It's basically a glorified friendly. So who cares? I am going to tell the boys I'm far from pleased, though. That was not good. So after that, I've been here thinking for the last five minutes. There's still a week of the transfer window to go. Do I go out and get a proper left back? I don't need to. I have Kieran Tierney and Ben Chilwell, both of whom are very good footballers. There's just something about Liverpool that's getting to me, and I, I can't figure out how we beat them. And we need to, I need to come up with a solution, because we've got a load of hard fixes at the start of the season as well. You know I hate going to Vicarage Road. That's up first. Then we've got City. And those are the two games that we will be watching in the next episode for the start of the series. By that point, Reese Nelson may well be in a Man City shirt. We just don't know. Thank you so much for watching the season three opener. I hope you have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, then please do like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of my signs in the comment section. And let me know if you think there's any more business I can do before the week is over. Like I said, we should have around about £50 million to play with once the Reese Nelson transfer goes through. Let me know your thoughts. And until I see you in the next episode where we kick off our Premier League campaign, stay cool.